hello everyone welcome to the video on the statutory audit and the different types of audit report now just a quick point here that before looking at this video I hope that you have already looked at the different you know uh, videos that we have recorded before uh, in wherein we explain the basics about accounting you know the promoters the you know I mean, all, all that stuff I mean the management MDA you know because I mean overall context of this particular topic called audit is actually laid there. Let me just quickly redraw that example for your benefit. There was a person called P who has given his money to a person called M. M stands for the management. So it is actually the promoter's money that was put in the business. Management was running it and gave them a return let's say of $12. So obviously you know Promoter wanted some detail about this 12. So management said that sir, any quantitative detail you can look at it from my income statement, my balance sheet and my cash flow statement. So performance, position and liquidity. All three aspects you can look at from here. Promoter said no, no, I want a little more qualitative aspects also, descriptive aspect also. So management like sir, here is a document called as MDA which talks about why happened, you know, whatever this will happen. So the reasons, the explanations, etc., all subjectively are written here. But honestly, this guy promoter wasn't very satisfied. Now, what therefore promoter did is promoter appointed an expert called as A, who is an accounting as expert. The role of A was to go to the management, verify these three things and report back to the person who has appointed him. So an important point that I'm making is A did not know management before, number one. Number two, uh, A was appointed by P. Number three, A will report to P, not to M. Okay, this person is called as auditor, appointed by the shareholder, reporting back to the shareholder in order to have an independent review of the financial statement. So Typically, if we just look at the definitions, an audit is an independent review of financial statement. Why? To reasonably assure, not 100%, but yeah, materially, to reasonably assure the stakeholders, pretty much, you know, the shareholders, about the fairness of the financial statement. Now, an important point here, this is not about correctness. Fairness is not equal to correctness. What I'm trying to say is, if let's say profits are 100 in particular year, and next year they become let's say 190 and or let's say in another another case a hundred dollar profit become 191 now try and get to it a little more maturely that 190 is not equal to 191 but the message that both the situation situation a and situation b are communicating is pretty much the same so auditor will not really be bothered whether the message, uh, you know, the, the profit is 190 or 191. They will not go down to the last penny of each and every figure. What they basically have to assure is that the overall message that the financial statements are communicating is in sync and in line with, you know, what the actual situation is. The auditor can have four situations and in all the situations he is going to do a different report. The first and the let's say a 99% case chance which is a standard or an unqualified report wherein what we are trying to say that your no problem was found. So it's absolutely okay as per as the auditor. Second, there was a problem but the problem was not material enough. So the problem was immaterial. That means there were some differences between the management and the figures as per auditor but the you know auditor is also you know is not making an issue out of it as much. Adverse report there is a problem and this is a material problem very important problem which means the color of the money is changing the message which is communicated by the financial statement is different than the situation on the ground. This is something which the shareholder really need to worry about. In some situation, this is pretty interesting, in some situation, the disclaimer is given. What do you mean by disclaimer? It is basically a no opinion. I mean, what I'm trying to say is, let's say auditor goes to the management and try and, um, you know, 
let's say try and do the verification of the income statement balance sheet and cash flow because of some reason maybe non availability of the right person no explanations being given by the management they are actually not able to form an opinion now here is an important exam question. Disclaimer of opinion does not mean that there is a fraud happening. It does not mean that it's an adverse situation. It just means that I don't know what is going on. So therefore, please don't rely on my opinion. That's what a disclaimer of opinion means. Please don't you know take disclaimer of opinion meaning that you know there is there must be something fishy. Therefore, disclaimer is given. A, there are certain sometimes legible reasons also. For example auditor of a company you know, that wanted to audit uh, could not do because the books of accounts were taken by the courts in context of a case which was pending against the company now it is the income statement balance sheet and cash flow may be correct so auditor can't really say since they have been taken by court therefore I will assume that they are incorrect no that's not correct so I'm going to raise an issue materially only if I find there is an issue I am not able to find any issue here the four elements of a standard report, very important from an exam point, is the first bullet point. Auditor upfront says that making a financial statement is not my job. My job is really and only to make a you know opinion on it. So FS financial statement, the preparation of that is responsibility of management. Second, the accounting statement that have been for accounting standards that have been followed, there is a reasonable assurance that they are free from material error. Okay, so there are two important points reasonable and free from material error only. The third point is that the estimates and the principles that the management and the accounting are, have used in the financial statement preparation are also good reasonable as per the size of the business, the nature of the business, so on and so forth. And the fourth point again an exam point is what has been the status or the quality or the quantum of the internal control put in by the management to try and understand this is a company which needs to be run effectively promoters have put in their money so ultimately it is the management's duty to ensure that the fraud or you know any such thing doesn't happen so management tries and put a lot of checks and balances in the system this checks and balances is called as internal control they are set by the management so therefore the management has to write a detailed report as to and obviously addressing the shareholder as to what they did with the company and how were they you know effectively controlling uh, the, the checks and balances it is the auditor who is just supposed to provide a comment again an exam question as far as the internal control is concerned what is the role of management to provide a detailed report what is the role of auditor just to write a comment on that okay now let me come to a very special specific exceptional point and the point is let us say let me take a context I am a pharmaceutical company a very small company and pretty much one product line what it means is that I am selling let's say only one particular medicine and in pharmaceutical, you are aware that there are a lot of cases of patents, trademarks, etc., you know, against each other because, you know, let's say this formula was mine, this formula was not yours, etc., etc. So, a giant like GlaxoSmithKline has filed a case against this smaller pharma company claiming that, you know, the patent that they are running is not yours. And the probability is that, you know, obviously GSK with their, you know, bear with all the size, the financial muscle might win it. Now, I am the auditor of this smaller company. The financial statement of the company are absolutely fine. So that said, I have to issue a standard report. But there is another big problem which I can't quantify in money terms. If I cannot express something in money terms and that something is extremely material then as an auditor it is my duty to report it to the shareholder I don't deny that this might already be told by the management also that might be told by the management of this pharma company to the shareholder of this pharma company under MDA or under any circumstance but my point is as an auditor I just want to be doubly sure so I'm going to say mr. shareholder 
otherwise the report is absolutely fine no problem but here is an explanatory paragraph a subjective a descriptive thing that i want to tell you now that brings me to an important point accountant management auditor see financial statement is a number game but the law gives you adequate opportunity to do descriptive thing as well so as an accountant if i have to tell anything descriptive i use something called as footnotes as a management that if i have to tell something descriptive i use mda and as an auditor if i have to do something i use explanatory paragraph you know there is like a good parallel that you can draw here so i hope that this small session on audit is clear i look forward to speak to you uh, in my forthcoming session thank you